So in this next video, we're going to just have a, a brief discussion about preparing the horse um, for scanning. I think the first thing to remember is that um, this is a clinical examination um, in some ways, like any other, um, and it pays to just make sure you've taken some time to get some information about the history of the horse, um, some of the segment, and so on. Because like with any clinical examination, the more information you have before you go in, uh, the, more, the more useful um, your further investigations, in, including ultrasound scanning, are going to be. Um, I think there are several things to bear in mind when we're, we're thinking about preparing a horse for uh, ultrasound scanning of its lower legs. Um, firstly, the potential need for sedation. Uh, getting decent quality images, uh, as you'll find when you start doing this, does require uh, quite subtle movements and alterations of the position of the probe, and that really requires the horse to be standing fairly still. As you get more proficient and more practiced, you may find that you get quite quick at the scanning, you can move around with the horse that's fidgeting. But when you first start out in particular, um, or if you need to do a really thorough examination of all the structures of the lower leg, you want to make sure the horse is going to stand still. And in many cases, that's that going to mean sedating it. A couple of words of warning with sedating them. Firstly, obviously make sure you've got permission from the owner. Um, and secondly, just bear in mind any horse that's competing in athletic activity may be subject to dope re regulations um, and, and you want to be certain that uh, if you give it some uh, sedation, you're not going to, to cause trouble with blood testing down the line. Um, it's going to take a while to start with uh, when, you, when you're trying to get used to scanning and again when you're having to do a more thorough scan. Um, so you want to make yourself comfortable. Don't be trying to sort of squat or fidget in, a, in an awkward and uncomfortable environment. Um, get yourself something to sit on. Um, have a stool here that we've got. Um, whatever it takes, but just make sure you've got something comfortable to sit on. And also make sure you're going to be safe. Uh, hopefully, again, if you're sedating the horse, it's going to be fairly well behaved. Um, but just make sure you've got an escape route. You can move out of the way um, if necessary. And of course, you're using expensive ultrasound equipment, so make sure the same goes for that, that you can get it out of the way quickly if necessary. Also make sure um, you're going to have someone who's good at holding the horse, um, and preferably somebody who knows it, like the owner, who's ready and prepared there to hold the horse for you whilst, you know, for the, the entire duration of your exam. It's also worth bearing in mind, um, particularly when you start out, that you don't necessarily uh, find yourself uh, coming up with lesions, discovering lesions and being 100% certain what they are right from the word go. And if you're in doubt as to whether or not something's normal or abnormal, just remember most horses are going to have uh, a normal other leg. So for example, if you're doing the front left leg, probably in most cases the front right leg is going to be normal um, and, and you can just scan that one as well and it gives you comparison. And in fact, it always pays to scan both legs so that you do have a record of, of both. Um, it's quite important to get very good contact between the end of the probe and the skin of the horse. And one of the main enemies to that is hair. So uh, if you want to get good ultrasound images, you're going to have to clip the hair. Um, bear in mind that often people are not going to want you to do that. Um, so again, before you do so, make sure you've got permission from the owner and that also they know which area, how big an area of the leg you're going to be clipping and that it may take some time for that hair to grow back. If you're absolutely not allowed to clip the hair, so show horses, for example, or race horses, uh, then you can get images, um, but you need to make sure that the hair is as wet as possible. Um, so you can use water, alcohol. Um, what it's worth doing is making sure that whatever liquid you use is safe for use on the end of the probe. And in particular, alcohol tends to wreck the end of ultrasound probes. So if you do have to do that, make sure you put some kind of protective cover over the end of the probe, like a latex glove uh, filled with, with ultrasound gel. And that just gives it some, some degree of protection. Once you've clipped the hair off the leg, you're going to want to clean the skin. The skin, uh, any kind of debris or dirt on the skin will interfere with the ultrasound qual image quality and you need to give that a thorough clean off. It doesn't quite need to be an aseptic clean, but it does want to be a, a pretty thorough clean with something like chlorhexidine. And then before you start scanning, what you want to do, that nice clean dry leg, is to put a load of ultrasound gel on it. Don't go crazy, don't go overboard, you don't want loads of it just sat on the skin. But try and put a fair amount in and, and massage it into the skin. 
If you can then leave that for five or 10 minutes, you'll find that it soaks into the skin and gives a much better contact and, and therefore a much, much better image than if you just slap the, the gel on and, and away you go. I think at that time, it's quite a useful opportunity then to say, okay, we'll leave the horse there for five minutes, let the gel soak in, at which point I'll go and enter the patient details into the ultrasound machine. And it just forces you to delay then so that that gel soaks in and ensures you get the best possible contact. Once you've uh, done all of those things, you're pretty much ready to get scanning. <laughs>